This video is about a fit trend operator. This operator allows trends to be found in series data, uh, which is often useful during exploring or summarizing. The fit trend operator itself is simple to use, but there are some things to note to avoid getting a wrong answer. This video shows it being used inside loop attributes in order to illustrate how to fit trends to multiple individual attributes. In addition, we'll also fit trends using different inner functions, namely a simple average, a linear regression, k-nearest neighbours and support vector machine. So what we'll do is we'll look in detail at some data, then we'll cover the loop attributes operator, which is used to select different attributes to have trends fitted to. Then we'll obviously look at the fit trend operator itself in some detail, and we'll use linear regression first as its inner operator. Then we'll look at joining the results of the fit trend operation inside the loop attributes operator to make sure everything works properly. A small gotcha needs to be mentioned at this point. Then we'll use different trend fitting models inside fit trend. These will be default model, k nearest neighbors, and then support vector machine. And then finally, we'll just look at the importance of getting the ID correct when using fit trend. It's a small gotcha that's important to, to note. Okay, so let's start with some data. So this is the Ford company share price data since something like 1972. And I've saved it in my repository and I'm going to select three things out of it. The adjusted close, the close and the volume. The date is a, is a special attribute, so we'll make it through. And then I'm going to set the role of the date attribute to be of type date. It's set to ID by default. This is very important. We'll come back to this. But I'm going to set a breakpoint just at this point here, and we can look at the shape of the data. So it's 10,615 examples, and from June the 1st, 1972, to a few days ago, um, July 2014. If I do some plotting. Let's use series. So this is the, here's the close. You can see the year on the bottom here. And here's, here's the, the closing share price. The adjusted one I think is an inflation adjusted one as by the looks of that when I, when I superimpose them. And if I put the volume here, it's a different scale. You can see the volume is, well, all very interesting for people that do this sort of thing. Okay. So then what we're going to do we're actually going to call the loop attributes operator and we're going to set that to all regular attributes. We're not including the special one, the date one. Uh, so the loop attribute macro will be set to the value of the attribute we're currently on. So we're, when we're inside the loop attribute operator. So we go inside here and there are three things. The first thing we'll do is select the attribute we're on. So we set the parameters to the select attributes operator here to be the value of the macro loop attributes. So this will be, you know, close, adjusted close and volume essentially in that order probably. And the effect of this is that we will select the single attribute we're on and the date will also be in there as well because it's a special attribute. That will then get passed to fit trend. We'll look at that in a minute. And um, we then join the result of the trend operation with the original data. This is quite important. Now, so let's just, the fit trend operator itself, very simple. It takes a single attribute. In this case, it's going to be the value of the loop attribute we're on. And let's keep the original. So this will generate a new attribute. So let's, for fun, we'll set a breakpoint just before the fit trend and see what happens. So, as predicted, we've filtered everything but the date and the close. So obviously, the first attribute that it's got to in loop attributes is close. So clearly, if I were to plot that, you know, that's what it looks like. Fair enough. Now what will happen if I go inside the fit trend operator? Inside this is a single operator. These ones commented out. We'll come to them, these later. But I'm passing it to the linear regression operator. Now it's quite instructive to set a breakpoint before this just to see what it's expecting. So I'll do that now. So I'm going to run the process again. 
And if you remember, there was a date and um, the close attribute were passed to this fit trend operator. But when we get inside, let's have a look at what actually happens on the inside. Now what's happening is that we're seeing the close and the date as before, but now an ID has been generated. If we look at the statistics for these, we can see ID is in fact just an integer of type regular. So it's not an ID. The date attribute, that's unchanged as of type date. So that's essentially going to be ignored. And the closing, the close attribute has turned into a label. So what that means is that this operator here is going to try and fit a linear regression to predict the label, the close, based on an ID, which is incrementing from 1 up to n, where n 10,000 odd, and that will have the effect of fitting a, the, um, to a trend line. If we set a breakpoint after this and let this now run, we'll get a little linear regression model out of it. In text terms, it's basically saying um, this is for the close price, and it's basically, well, we can't really interpret it, but if what we do is we go out of the linear regression, if we actually go out of completely and break at the output from the fit trend operator. So I'm going to rerun the whole thing and I'm going to break at the end of the fit trend after the model has been created and applied I, I guess to the data. Let's see what comes out. So now what's happened is the fit trend operator has generated a new attribute called trend close. So if we plot that we can see I'm using series here, so I'll do that trend. So essentially it's a negative trend. So we can sort of believe that. So it's essentially fitted as best it can, those variations to come up with that line, with that slope. So if I recollect the linear regression model had a negative slope based on ID and a constant, which is about 50 or I think it started there and gradually declined away. So I think we can believe that using a linear regression model with this data has resulted in a, in a trend line that we can sort of believe it looks about right. Okay, now we're now going to come back to the ID problem. There's a problem about IDs. We'll come back to that at the end. But for now, that's fine. So if I now clear that breakpoint, I'm going to set a breakpoint before here to see what happens when we join the original data with the newly created trend attribute that we've just made. So here we go. So this is this is the original data. You can see date, close, volume, and adjusted close, which was in the original. This is the fit trend output. So what will happen when we join them? We're using the date as an ID. It isn't actually an ID. I've set it to be a type of date, but it's going to be used as an ID in this situation. What will happen is we'll get a joined example set. I'll just run that. And now the output from join will be close, volume, adjusted close, and now it'll be trend close. And it's all matched up with the date correctly. Now, it's very important when you exit the loop attribute operator you must ensure that you pass a full example set because otherwise the loop attributes operator will get confused and not know where to go next so you must you know it, you must always give it an example set that it can iterate over and the, the ones it's going to iterate over have been essentially chosen during this selection here so we've selected all attributes here this was the original open close and volume sorry, close, adjusted close and volume attributes. Doesn't matter, we can add additional attributes, but the original attributes must be present in the example set that's output to this line here. Otherwise, it all goes horribly wrong. And that can cause all sorts of confusion and bafflement of some, but you know, once you've understood it, it's sort of obvious really. So I'm now gonna run this all the way to the end. 
So essentially what we've now created is a new trend line for each of the regular attributes that were in the original data. So we can plot these in the usual way. So let's pick uh, something series here. So adjust closes that one and the trend is like that. And volume is like that and the trend is like that and close was like that was going down and you can even plot them on the same just to illustrate that it all looks very good now <laughs> people's eyes are drawn to this cross it's no more significant than something to do with inflation and um, nothing to be taken seriously but anyway it all looks very nice so let's recap so we've looked at the loop attributes operator, we've looked at fitting a trend, we've joined the result to make new attributes for each of the trend input attributes. Now let's change fit trend itself to, to fit another model. So what we'll do is we'll use this one called the default model. Now if you haven't used this before it's extremely simple. All this does it's essentially do one of these very simple operations on all the data. So I've picked average. So what it will do, it will actually pick the average of all of the data points. Let's just run it. Okay, so let's just plot. So here's the adjusted close. Here's the trend. Now notice the trend this time is just the average of all of those data points. Similarly, volume and trend volume doesn't show very well it's down here close and trend close is there and you can sort of convince yourself it's an average if you look at the statistics for the data so adjusted close here it is it has an average of 6.361 something the trend is actually set to exactly that value similarly volume and trend volume you can see their average this is what these values are here close so by using the default model in this case, we've essentially just taken the average. So it's not really a trend, it's an average, but it's useful to know. So let's move on to the K nearest neighbors case. Okay, and I'm setting just simply nearest 200 using just Euclidean distance, that'll be fine. What this will have the effect of doing is finding the nearest 200 points in terms of the ID, which is the regular attribute that's passed this K nearest neighbors, and it will use um, an average of those to come up with a result. So this will have the effect of essentially creating a moving average. Let's just see that. It's a little bit slower this one, so I'll pause the video while it runs. It took uh, about 40 odd seconds, so let's plot the result now this time you can see now the red line on this is the raw data and the blue line is the k nearest neighbors trend so essentially what's happening is doing a, a, a lazy or greedy um, fit to the nearest 200 points to come up with a moving average essentially so if i zoom in here you can see that happening so sure if the blue line is is the moving average the trend and the red line is the raw data. So that's very nice actually. Very neat. Final one, let's just for fun put a support vector machine in. Um, I'm going to use um, radial set C to 0 0.01, so it has a slight bit of tolerance. Let's just run that. This takes a bit of time, I'll pause the video as well. Okay, so it took about one and a half minute. Now, um, now if I plot the graph, you get a much nicer looking curve, whether it's real or not is another matter. So for example, here's the adjusted close data. So it's fitted some sort of curve and you could sort of believe it. Here's the volume one, that oh, doesn't show up terribly well that one, but it's, it's shaped out of that when the uh, axes are expanded. It's sort of down here. And the close one, well, there it was. So it's all very nice. Okay, so let's go back to uh, design view and let's just make sure to cover the final point, which is the importance of getting the ID attribute right. 
So I'm going to put this back to linear regression because it runs quickly and illustrates the point nicely. And get rid of that. So what we'll do is we're going to fit a trend. So if we just refresh our memory as to what that looks like. So I'm fitting a trend on all the data points. So here, for example, the adjusted close and an increasing trend. Volume close. Okay. Now, if if I don't change the role of my date attribute to be of type date, it will stay as, a, as an ID. So to show that, let me set a breakpoint just before this loop attribute so we can see what, what hap what's happening. So sure enough, there's date here and it's its role is ID. Okay. When we get inside the loop attributes operator, I shall set a breakpoint just before fit trend. We should now see date and the first attribute in the loop attributes operator which is close. Sure enough, date is a type ID, close is a regular. Now if I go inside fit trend and set a breakpoint just before the linear regression, we'll actually see okay so what's happened now is that close has been changed into a label and date has been changed to be regular. Okay, so what? And the problem with that is that the regression now is trying to fit this date attribute, which I don't think it's quite understood how that works really. So, anyway, the consequence of all of this is if I go right out and just run the whole process, what we'll see now when I draw charts is that it's no longer a trend that's been fitted, it's just the average. So I think I'm guessing that the ID, the date ID, now is such a large number that it really can't fit it as a trend to it because the numbers are basically huge. And the difference between the minimum and maximum date is quite small compared to the hugeness of the absolute value. So I suspect what's happening is fitting a, just an average to that as the best fit. You can see that for all of them. Okay, there's... So it's similar behaviour to the default model, but it's actually wrong if, well, it's right if you expect this, but if you're expecting a trend to be fitted and you happen to have some sort of ID that's accidentally finding its way inside the fit trend operator, then things won't work as expected. Okay, so anyway, let's put it all back and I'll run it one more time and we'll have a final look at the data using linear regression. Okay, so here we go. So this is the close with a nice trend, the adjusted close with an upward trend, uh, volume slightly upward trend obviously, and let's just combine everything, all the closes together. Okay, there we go.